Oh, fantastic new development. And if you yourself, or if maybe if you know someone who would like to sign up for that Reprieve trial or just to get any information on the trial, you can head over to reprievetrial.org. Well, there you can find a list of participating hospitals and all the info that you may need. That's reprievetrial.org. Now, very much following on from that incredible story, keeping with the, the theme of healthy hearts, here's a truly miraculous story from aboard. Recently, a 13-year-old girl by the name of Chloe Nobonnet, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, mm -hmm. Chloe, became the first child the UK has seen to receive an artificial heart. Now, she was diagnosed with an enlarged heart as an infant and suffered a stroke while waiting for a donor. Well, this led doctors to perform emergency surgery on the girl and during her surgery she actually became the first person to be transported between two different hospitals with her chest cavity still My open. Word. Now the artificial heart kept her alive for four weeks while she waited for a new real heart and this morning we've invited cardiologist Dr. Tom Maven on the line who is uh, who was actually spent some time in the UK and the past learning about how this all works. Dr. Maven, good morning and welcome to Expresso. Good morning to both of you. It's Thank so you. It's good to have you on the line. Um, Dr. Maven, we've got to ask, because I mean, this does feel like groundbreaking yeah. work and the length of the procedure, the fact that she had to um, stay with an open heart, with an artificial heart, keeping her alive during that period. How did this actually play out? How does that artificial heart actually work? How did she stay alive? Okay, obviously it's a very complicated case and yeah. try and get some of the medical detail from the on the internet was a little difficult and I haven't been able to phone colleagues of mine, but it's clear that she was born with her heart actually outside of her chest. Wow. So it was at birth that she was in trouble. And she had her heart transplant at a very young age to get her going and that lasted her up to her current age of 12 or 13. And from what I gather, she had two further heart transplants in that period. And last year, the transplanted heart packed up again, and they had the option but to put her on what's called a left ventricular assist device, which is an artificial external pump, which allows her own heart to recover to some degree whilst she's waiting for a to, to be available. There are various types of mechanical heart pumps, and funnily enough, the first one was implanted about 25 years ago, so it's not all that new, but the models are becoming better and more practical. Um, unfortunately, the biggest challenge is to maintain an uh, electric or an e supply to keep the pump going all the time. And at the moment, that is still external. In other words, they have to carry a battery pack around their shoulder. Wow. It's plugged into the system. Um, the very new ones are really quite remarkable in that you can recharge the battery through the skin without breaking the skin. Wow. But um, um, the, the more commonly used ones, like this child had, she would have a wire coming from the device and plugged into the back of her head somewhere where there's a little stop stud so the electrical wires can be... Uh, attached there, and then she'd carry a, a bag around her shoulder. The, the very new ones are even more remarkable in that they don't need any stud or any external uh, uh, skin um, lesion or anything. It's actually transmitted magnetically, and the electricity is charged magnetically. And they can sit and charge, you know, sort of plug themselves into the wall if they're not walking around, then they don't need a bag. Wow. But as soon as they need to get up and walk around, she needs to transfer that to her battery pack and, and off she goes. Oh, Dr. Maven, this is absolutely wow. incredible convergence of technology. Yeah. And I would imagine some doctors working overtime. Um, but to see these kinds of solutions available now are truly mind-blowing. So thank you so much for opening a window into this momentous um, new development as yeah. well. And thank you so much for the work that you're I, doing I just in this one area. Thing, which is important to the public. Yeah. The reason there's so much going on here and the difficulty over you know, 25 years is there's not enough data to our transplantation, which at the end of the day is probably the best option. Sure, so we, yeah. we broadcast that well, message. We need more donors. Need more donors. Yeah.
Uh, well, that, so that can be the, the message to resonate this morning, that there are medical answers, but we need more donors. Thank you, yeah. uh, Dr. Maven, for joining us this morning. A truly remarkable case.